Hi, everyone, and welcome back to our BCBA exam prep series, where we're breaking down the sixth edition test content outline and going over ABA concepts to hopefully make it easier to understand. So far, we have talked about philosophical assumptions, and this week we're going to dive into the seven dimensions of ABA. This video will discuss definitions of the seven dimensions of ABA as well as some applied examples at the end. So we'll go through each one, and hopefully you can think of some key words that are associated with the terms and come out with a better understanding overall. So some people like to use acronyms to remember these. Some of them include bat cage or get a cab. Whichever you choose, I'm going to go through them uh, in the order of bat gauge. Before we talk about these terms in detail, I just want to talk about the importance of the seven dimensions of ABA and what they even are. So when we are developing goals, assessing clients, and creating treatment plans and working with families, we want to keep these in mind as we're developing programs and doing assessments. Uh, so we want to think about each of these things as we are defining behavior figuring out what to target, figuring out how to write our programs, because all of these are related and relevant to the applied practice. First up, we have behavioral. Uh, behavioral states that anything we're targeting needs to be observable and measurable. This is uh, going to include everything that we can see and everything that the person does. And we're going to avoid mentalistic explanations. We did touch on that on the last video. Uh, we want to really focus on examples of what the behavior looks like instead of uh, and eliminating the function for just focusing on the behavioral piece. Next up is applied. Applied is of the most important dimensions. I think that's probably my opinion. But really, we're asking ourselves, why are we targeting this? What is the importance of this goal or this behavior? It focuses on socially significant behaviors. When we talk about examples, we'll talk more about what that means. Next up is technological. And this is important when we're thinking about how the programs and procedures are described and written. This needs to be able to be replicated by others. We want to consider how we're defining behaviors and what the procedures, how they're listed in measurement criteria so that it's easily understood and can be replicated by other therapists or families. Next up is conceptually systematic. This is stating that procedures are derived from ABA principles and basic principles. So instead of using things that we feel like work, or maybe we've heard of things that might work, we want to make sure we're focusing on the science and using those conceptually systematic approaches. Next up is analytic. When we're analyzing the data, does it demonstrate a functional relationship or experimental control? I think more simply put in day to day, we're analyzing the data to formulate our conclusions rather than thinking about how we feel about the intervention. Uh, so did it actually, by analyzing the data, is there proven to be effectiveness there? Or is there a functional relationship? Did the intervention make a change that we wanted? Let's look at the data and see. Let's analyze. So we're very data driven. Next up is generality, and this is generalization. So luckily, the term kind of matches what we know about generalization, and it's looking at over time, over different people, and over different contexts or environments, how does this behavior do? Whether it is it a behavior we want to decrease, is that generalizing to other settings, people, times? Is it a new skill that we hope translates to other areas? If so, then generality is considered. So we really want to build that into our programming along the way, too, instead of retrospective. We want to think about, okay, what can we do to set up this client for success with generalization? Next up is effective. As it kind of sounds, is this uh, is there a socially valid outcome? So did the intervention work? Was there a practical significance of change that we wanted? So you notice that in these dimensions, we're covering uh, several different approaches. So effective isn't the only thing we have to look for. We also need to consider how the treatment was done. So although we might have the outcome that we want, was a punishment procedure used? So you, you see how we have to consider all of these things together, and that would be under the applied 
piece of why are we targeting this? Is this socially significant? You know, considering generalization, conceptually systematic, how we're doing things with procedures, considering all of these are really important to, to build a comprehensive and ethical program as well. First example for behavioral. Remember, this is stating that the behavior must be observable and measurable. We want to think about our operational definition. So, for example, tantrum behavior could be defined as dropping to the floor, hitting surfaces with hands, rather than just tantrum or acting out or something like that. Uh, we could even go further to define what dropping to the floor looks like or what hitting surfaces looks like and be descriptive with that versus trying to describe how they feel would not be included, would not be considering behavioral. For applied, we're thinking about why are we targeting what we're targeting? So some an example of something that we wouldn't need to worry about and when we're considering applied would be self-stimulatory behavior that is not harmful. So that is something that we don't target. So if, if it isn't a plan, we're trying to consider the applied piece and say, how is this socially significant by us targeting hand flapping? Is it something that is really necessary? That's a question that we have to ask ourselves. Why are we working on this? Why are we spending so much time on targeting this skill or teaching or trying to decrease this behavior? So the applied piece, we really want to consider the why and the social significance and how it benefits our client. For, uh, let's see here, next up is technological. So for technological, we want to make sure that our procedures are described completely and precisely, like writing a step-by-step -step protocol for prompting or a step-by-step -step protocol for a task analysis. That would be a good example of ut utilizing the technological piece. Conceptually systematic, so when teaching a child to wash hands, the behavior analyst explains that using backwards chaining procedure is based in principles and can be uh, successful in teaching this skill. And analytic, I kind of gave an example before, but when we are post-intervention and we're looking at our data, maybe when we're writing a progress report or having a parent meeting, we are looking at the data to formulate our conclusions and analyze what does or does not work. With generalization, uh, if a child who learns with one therapist how to communicate using their AAC device can then do that at home, that's a great example of generality. Lastly, we have effective. So looking at not only did the behavior do what we hoped it did, but did the intervention alone produce that meaningful change? Sometimes that's really hard to kind of unfold. There could be other extraneous variables that influence the changes, but Effective is really looking at, did the intervention do what we intended it to do? Let's do this practice question together. A behavior analyst uses an intervention that significantly reduces problem behavior during therapy, but not at home or school. This intervention most clearly lacks which dimension of ABA? So the answer here is C, generality. We want to consider how we could best generalize the skills during therapy and other settings as well. I hope you enjoyed today's video. Next video, we will be still talking about the philosophical underpinnings and some of the foundations of behavior. Then we'll move into concepts and principles. Just a reminder to like and subscribe so you can stay up to date on these video releases. I'll be posting at least a video a week, and I hope that you tune in for the next video. Comment below if you have any more examples of any of these or what you found useful, or if you have any further questions. Thanks for watching.